peso que tiene la lucha antirracista en su vida. This is Real Madrid star forward Vinicius Jr. With the Brazil national team, the 23-year-old tried to hold back tears after the constant abuse he has suffered on the world stage of professional sports. Here's a sample. Against Valencia, Vinicius was racially abused and called, quote, a monkey by supporters. He has tried signaling, just as he did here, of the racism he has endured. But the president of La Liga, the president, Javier Tebas, has showed time and time again that he appears rather indifferent. Headlines all over the world, but not necessarily here in Spain. We're going to take a look at how this story is being covered here. And I think it's important to look at the language used by the media here. We're going to start off by looking at the Catalan Sport Daily Sport. On the front cover, the lead story is about Lionel Messi. There is a story at the top and it says, Escándalo Vinicius en Mestalla. It doesn't say racist scandal in Mestalla. It doesn't say Vinicius suffers racism once again, scandalously in Mestalla. It says Vinicius scandal in Mestalla. Almost putting the blame on him. This is Marca. This is the best-selling sports paper in Spain. Their headline is Puro Madrid. It's because Real Madrid's basketball team won the Euro League. En todos los líos, it says here. In all the problems. Vinicius was the protagonist in all the polemic actions in Mestalla before being sent off by the Burgos Benguechea. Again, it's building this narrative that in some way Vinicius is to blame. Against Real Valladolid, the abuse occurred yet again. This time, bananas were thrown in Vinicius's direction as he left the pitch. As opposed to just telling everybody that you're fighting racism and you've been doing so for years, tell everybody what you've been doing. Show us some kind of evidence of that. But with no evidence, certainly within, within the stadiums, certainly especially as far as Vinicius Jr. is concerned, I'm not sure how you, as the head of a league, I'm not sure how you, as any right-thinking adult human being, sits down and pens that as a response to Vinicius Jr. ESPN's Shaka Hislop would go at Tebas on the worldwide leader. In the most terrible scenes, um, has ended up confronting the racism in La Liga and the entirety of Spain after he was racially abused from the stands throughout Real's 1-0 defeat at Valencia on Sunday. And during the game, the Brazilian attempted to point out to the referee the fans who behind the goal were racially abusing him. The ref ignored him. Um, and by the end of the game, he'd been red carded and cost as a villain after wrestling with an opponent who charged at and choked him. The men in Blazers spoke on it as well. We need to come together, even the players that from past and have a unified approach to this. The only way that people are going to listen is if players just step away from games and say, listen, this weekend we ain't playing. Until your rules and regulations are bang in place, there's, there's games that are going to be missed in the calendar. Still. Even with many in the media space ringing the alarm, the attacks continued. Atletico Madrid, the fierce rivals to Real, saw their supporters hang a black doll from a highway with Vinicius's number on the back of it. From the Athletics, Mario Cordagana and Ali Rampling, Vinicius Jr. has suffered persistent racist abuse in Spain and has been subjected to it in over 10 Spanish stadiums over the past two years. However, he said he had not considered leaving Spain, as that would give those who have abused him, quote, exactly what they want. Things have gotten worse 
Since the first time I denounce what happened to me, he would say, because people are not punished, they feel like they can keep saying things about the color of my skin to try to affect how I play. But they could try to do that in other ways, and I wouldn't have a problem with that. I just want to play. And I want to be able to go to stadiums without anyone bothering me because of the color of my skin. He'd say, I will stay because that way the racist can continue to see my face more and more. I'm a bold player. I play for Real Madrid and we win a lot of titles and that doesn't sit well with a lot of people. I just want to play football, but it's hard to move forward. I feel less and less like playing. Continuing on from his presser, he'd state, the lack of punishments is very frustrating. If we start punishing these people, not that they'll change their thinking, but they'll be afraid to speak out, whether it's in the stadium, where there are cameras, put fear into those people. I want to keep fighting for it, but it's hard. It doesn't matter if I win or lose the games. I'm already a winner for being here. And lastly, via ESPN, repeated Racist abuse against Vinicius has started a heated debate in Spain about tolerance for racism. Pilar Alegra, Spain's sports and education minister, on Tuesday stressed the government's commitment to combating racism while also condemning the racist incidents. Violence, racism, xenophobia, any type of discrimination are the antithesis of the value that sport displays. Every two weeks, there are meetings with Spain's Sports Council, La Liga, and the Spanish Football Federation to sanction this type of violent behavior. We are going to continue along this line to banish xenophobic and racist behavior from sports, but also from society as we unfortunately continue to experience this. First things first, y'all. If there are any stories we missed, if there are any that you would like to submit, get at me and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, DMs are open, and please, if you can, become a channel member and support our work here at TYT Sports and or go to tyt.com slash join. This is rather simple to me. We have seen how the United States post-Trump years, during and post-Trump years, have shown that fascism should be on the rise and anything that is anti-racist, morally driven, should be labeled with the widest brush of being woke. And we continue to see this not just in the United States, because we've clearly led the way in the wrong direction. We are seeing it in other countries as well. I mean, Georgia Maloney won, um, and she is a complete fascist. Um in Brazil, the voters did the right thing, but who knows if that's even going to take and it's going to persist. And this poisonous, toxic mindset of going after someone because they are simply a darker complexion is preposterous. The only way to combat all of this, as we are all one race, the human race, is togetherness to call out these things that happen. There is too much of a team sports mentality when it comes to not just politics, but also racism. And there needs to be stricter penalties for those who are in attendance that do this. Javier Tebas coming out and giving these wishy-washy statements has not helped the cause. And I hearken back to... When Raheem Sterling was on Manchester City and he was starting to bring this up, which mainly wasn't even the origins, obviously. This goes back many, many years, but the torch was being passed. And Sterling just decided to pick it up when no one would. And the vitriol he received, the bigotry he received, the racism that ran rampant at a football ground anywhere in England, and then also outside of in international friendlies and World Cup qualifying matches. And then we also saw the racism that happened with English players like Sacco, Sancho, Rashford, because they missed penalties. They were racially abused. Italian players, black Italian players, racially abused. When is enough enough? Because the beautiful game has turned so incredibly ugly over the years. And we're not going and progressing. 
all we are doing is allowing this to fester, which is breeding new life into the next coming of those who throw a banana at Venetius. We've been covering this for years, and I am telling you, it does not feel like it's getting better. To Venetius, I am sorry that your fellow man has let you down, but I envy your strength and determination to not leave the sports and leave Spain. 